one of the most anticipated dog breedings has finally been confirmed. The pups from this pairing of Zeta and DMX will be born very soon. We are now accepting deposits. Our pups will come with ears cropped and a two-year health guarantee. Get ahead of the pack on purchasing a puppy by contacting NWA Connie Corsos on Instagram at NWA Connie Corsos. Call or text 479-326-1603 with any questions. A guard dog is your first line of defense. These will be the right pups for the job. Final word. 19 months ago, the whole boxing community looked forward to the arrival of a powerful new enterprise which promised a chance to restore boxing to broader exposure and greater sports world prominence, more in keeping with its glorious past. More than $500 million in venture capital was stockpiled to be put to use in a daring plan to buy prime time on a wide variety of television networks. The series would be called Premier Boxing Champions. The goal was to demonstrate there was an unobserved audience that would erupt to ultimately incentivize those television networks to reverse the equation and pay for the fights. As many as 200 fighters bought in, among them some of the most accomplished young fighters on the planet. Keith Thurman, Adrian Broner, Danny Garcia, Adonis Stevenson and Mikey Garcia were all potential top 10 pound for pound guys who had been given main event exposure here on HBO. Deontay Wilder had already won a heavyweight belt. The piece de resistance, Errol Spence, came off the 2012 United States Olympic team. Could it really only have been a year and a half? Seems longer. And maybe because despite the extraordinary accumulation of talent and the seeming abundance of money, competitive fights like Leo Santa Cruz versus Abner Morris and Keith Thurman versus Sean Porter have been few and far between. For the most part, PBC stars have been given faint-hearted matchups against lackluster opponents, followed by long layoffs with predictable results in TV ratings and advertising sales. You might have thought that Spence's windfall audience of more than 6 million viewers in the NBC time slot just prior to Rio's closing ceremony would have given PBC a rejuvenated bounce. But in late September, NBC announced that two primetime PBC cards in December were dropped for now, and along with them, three shows on NBC Sports Network. For the last three months of 2016, there are no scheduled PBC shows. If PBC disappears, There'll be an urge to see that as a devastating loss. In truth, it was predictable. Nearly 40 years of delivery via subscription channels like this one and our primary competitor have accustomed boxing's audience to seeing a continuous story, uninterrupted by commercials. On commercial television, the mini dramas in the corners between rounds are visible only as tape flashbacks. As live entertainment, it's not the same thing. Boxing's next shot in the arm will emerge gradually as the high-profile and highly skilled fighters on the PBC roster begin to achieve free agency and reintegrate into the upper landscape. In the best of all possible worlds, someday Thurman and Spence will match up with Terence Crawford. Deontay Wilder will fight Anthony Joshua, and Adonis Stevenson will at long last face Sergey Kovalev. The path to that goal will require the unique brand of ingenuity, bravery, and passion that fuels real boxing promoters people who are capable of doing one of the world's hardest jobs. As we can now see, there's a great deal more to it than merely raising and spending $500 million. Thanks for being with us on this edition of The Fight Game. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So that was HBO's Jim Lampley about seven or eight years ago attempting to predict the demise of PBC around the time that they had Jesse Merge. Well, approximately three years after Jim Lampley went on that rant about Al Heyman in the PBC series, talking about how Al Heyman was not capable of being successful in this boxing business, HBO Boxing goes out of business. Exactly what Jim Lampley said was going to happen to PBC, it happened to HBO. And remember guys, Jim said this about seven or eight years ago. I bring this up because since the emergence of Al Heyman in the PBC series, boxing writers, old media, they have always written articles saying that PBC was going to go out of business. The real ironic part is Jim Lampley, he said, there's more of a great deal to it 
than just spending $500 million. And I've been told from people that work with the zone that Eddie Hearn, he blew $800 million. And the zone is the closest thing to a modern day HBO boxing, at least when you look at the setup, when you look at the commentators and their agenda. And we know that when it comes to DAZN's new boxing schedule compared to PBC's, let's just say DAZN almost has no fights on their schedule. And obviously when I say no fights, I mean not too many of significance. So it was recently reported that Paramount plans to merge its uh, Paramount and Showtime businesses, which immediately stirred up rumors that this meant that boxing, Showtime's boxing was going to be dropped from Showtime. And like I told you guys, they have been writing articles about PBC going out of business since the announcement of PBC. So Steven Espinoza, he finally spoke on the rumors of Showtime Boxing being dropped. And this is what he said. Now, in terms of, you know, what it does for boxing, look, in the short term, you know, there is no change. You know, we are probably a few days away from announcing another really ambitious schedule you know, a really robust uh, active schedule. You know, some of it has started to leak out, but there's still a lot that has not. And, you know, so there is no change going forward. I, I've seen all the, the silly reports from, you know, the St. Chasialistic, you know, we're going out of business February 23rd. I mean, saying we're going out of business February 23rd is idiotic. I mean, it's one of the dumbest things I've heard in the sport, and I've been in the sport, you know, for over 20 years. So, like, saying stuff like that, um, you know, people send it to me. Some are serious, some are panicked, some are laughing. I said, you know, I, I can I can only laugh, you know, because um, look, we're continuing to schedule events, we're continuing to announce events, we're doing some of the biggest events in the sport, both on pay per view and off pay per view, and that's not going to change in the short run. You know, where things go in the long run, look, um, you know, who knows? It's a difficult it's a difficult economy out there. Um, but right now, the company is definitely committed to the sport and committing to the sport beyond just 2023. And I haven't heard anything that changes that. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swell and inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs and defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.